Ladies and gentlemen, I am BBP, one half of the Brews Brothers. And we are here today at Aleman Brewing, 3304 North Knox. It's a hidden gem of a brewery in the northwest side of Chicago. And uh, we're here to come check it out. See you in a few. BBD's under the weather with a little bit of a headache. So I'm going to hold down the review for both of us. Catch you on side. Here we go, reserve parking. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And the gentleman's name was? Oh, I'm Nate. Okay, so this is Nate, uh, a part of the machine that runs an ale, man. That's right. And we want to thank you guys for what you do. Right on, we appreciate you coming. For sure. All right, catch you guys in a few. As you can see, they have the dope graffiti artwork. A nice hip hop element to it, which I'm very fond of. All right, so that looks like, right there looks like a double India, it looks like a pale ill, double IPA. And uh, so is this uh, the latest one that you guys uh, released? Or? This is a fresh release, just at our Super Rich Warehouse on Tuesday. So okay. Just now starting to filter out to, to retailers. I think I saw uh, Beer Miscuous tag us if they had On Lincoln, seen. right? Is it the one yeah. on Lincoln? Okay. Um, and gotten the market. And so, I mean, it'll start to, to filter out a few places. I don't know if it'll hit Vinnie's or not, but. Um, okay. Yeah. So you, you want it so. Uh, Tell the world a little bit about uh, yourself and how did you get into beer? Sure, I mean, I I was an entrepreneurship major in college, which I mean, you just you follow the path that's laid before you. And if you see a, a viable economic path on the other end and you're passionate about it, go do it. And so that's right. we're all like bar restaurant guys and we saw this opportunity and pulled together some money and here we are six years later still doing it, wow. still loving it. Uh, you know, we are Chicago's best kept secret. We're not as, as broadly available as maybe some other breweries, but we've worked really hard to, to build this space and I'm happy to welcome you into it. That's right. And that's the beauty of uh, breweries in Chicago like this. Not only is it a hidden gem because it's hidden behind a grocery store, but the, but the mystique of that makes it authentic overall. All right, so. Yeah. All right. I could take out the mask for this one. Man, I like those feelers, man. Those are bad. What's that? I like those feelers. Oh, those thank you. Dude, you won't believe uh, 20 bucks. 20 bucks? At Ross. You know Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Super old school. I yeah, like super it. old school. I'm all about old school. All right, fellas. So thank you for this. Absolutely. I want to send a cheers. Cheers. All right. All right, so what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, this is their latest project. So oh, wow, this is tasty. IPA. Okay. We're not known as the Light Paper. We like hot beers. We like multi. We like funky. We like all kinds of different things. But Definitely. 100 year anniversary of Prohibition. This is the first in the family series. So we have really? Really? Uh, rotating series of double IPAs. This is the first big, clean, classic. Tons of pineapple and melon hop character, some multi sweetness, they get an appropriate amount of looseness for 8.2, uh, and then just nice and, nice and dry in the finish. So, we're real happy with how this came out. We'll have some fruited and some adjuncted and some different takes on double IPAs throughout the series, but to kick it off, keep it classic. So, definitely, uh, from, from what I'm getting from it, Definitely elements of pineapple, and, and and it has a nice tart right in the middle. It's not overbearing, yeah. and I like the mellow smoothness of it. Very smooth. A little mellow grind. Yeah. Dr I mean, for 8.2, it's uh, you're not going to want to drink a four pack in one sitting, but that's right. It goes down pretty easy. Maybe. It may be right yeah. <laughs> if you're in the mood. And we have another gentleman over there. 
And the gen gentleman's name is again? What's up? That gentleman's name? Ben. Okay. How's it going, Ben? Ben is doing his thing over there. We want to thank him as well. Love the I love the artwork. He's I just got his own small business and we use a lot of his coffee in our beers. And okay. Vice versa, if we can help him out. Then Why not? Rise and tide. All right, so maybe you could uh, do a quick little tour on the the tanks. If that's cool. Absolutely. All right. So we're meeting right now. We're just doing the man's our flagship IPA. So that, uh, we are working over here transferring from that to the oil. Absolutely. You know, it's a small operation. It's very manual. We don't have a lot of fancy automation or toys. It's just you know, we green in by hand, we green out by hand. We are very hands-on brewery. You know, the glycol system that you know, we see built every piece of this ourselves. So, uh, so we're, we're, we're proud of. That's awesome. Six years and running, that's very impressive, by the way. Yeah, four, four years in operation, but we actually signed the lease on this place November 2013. So, we didn't get licensed until April 2016, like big, slow startup. So, as you talk about like, the hard work and this and that, a lot of that's just, we have time to kill. And hey, you know somebody, we know somebody who's a you know, project, and let's surround ourselves with creative people. And, like in the place, so if we had just been doing balls to the wall from day one, like it probably, it probably would not look this way, it probably would not feel this way, but uh, I'm sure anybody that does, it's, a, it's hard to not walk into this place every day and just have a little more uh, inspiration, you know? Especially the times that we're living in right now, especially now, so. Absolutely, I know there's a lot of artists out there that are just struggling even worse than breweries, because nobody's buying, nobody's going out to galleries, Essential, but we're doing as much art with my kids at home right now than we are reading in math. It's you know, you just you still need to express yourself. That's true, and it's that's a challenge within itself, yeah. but we're getting through this. Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, we uh, our April would have been our fourth anniversary. Normally, we would have filled this place off with a bunch of people and done our beef steak and. It's turned into an unofficial birthday party, but now it's all kind of virtual online stuff. But um, we, we generally love welcoming people in for bottle shares and very small isolated things. Can, can Which is always cool. Yeah. And as as I'm aware, you are an old school hip hop head like myself. Absolutely. Yes, uh, the golden era, pretty much. My my memory is not as it's like the media and my partner Dave or even. Right. Artist, but it's just how this music can move you. And right. Even that's kind of my first few years. I love them. There are so few opportunities to pick up a beer where you know nothing about it. Even down to like the style or anything. Like when you pick it up a menu or you, you get all these data points. It's where you just get to pick up a beer and experience it with no preconceived notions. And same thing. Throw on a very random set of music and you don't know what's going to come on. And just how does that, how does that hit you? At the end of the day, but uh, you know, very much the R and B, soul, some of the you know, Sam and Dave, and uh, but to me, like that. That's right. Music that, as a young person, where a lot of music sounded the same, that was something that, like really grabbed my attention. Really. Absolutely, because every every song had its own identity and. 
you can familiarize with it. Now a lot of stuff is repetitive and, you know, it doesn't have that much soul. Moving through, you know, the hip-hop and old school stuff and modern hip just seeing how everything's built on what came before it. Absolutely. The parallels are infinite. Like, a brewery like us wouldn't be here without you know, Sierra Nevada or some of these legacy brands that just kind of set that groundwork. And like, like what we're doing isn't the same as what they're doing. That's right. But it's all kind of built off the same blocks. And you, know, you, you hear hip hop today that sounds nothing like some of the predecessors, but I bet you go you know, scroll through those guys' records and Whew. there's a lot of the same music. Absolutely. That's very true. Uh, yeah. Normally, we would be clumping a little more, but like the, uh, the conflicting audio might not make for as good of a video. And, uh. So, again, I mean, we had signed the lease on the space, but we waited, you know, seven months just for a building permit. So, how do we color in the blank space? And. Uh, knew a guy who worked for CBS and we had pitched this idea of maybe getting these artists and he came and set up a bunch of GoPros and did a bunch of time lapses and partner Jim has some friends and they all kind of used to turn run with the crew that used to jump fences but we're now a very legitimate artist. So we were gracious enough for kind of the cost of uh, some beer and food and a bunch of fresh paint. We were willing to donate their time, and they came in and it's like kids at a candy shop. They're just like kids, kids, my yep. wall, my wall. Right. Uh, and then, uh, so what you're looking at here is the send. Uh, we're in the piece up here. Uh, nerd with the there's a series of beautiful fermenters starting off with like the carboy that you ferment. That is dope. Home brewers up blank canvas forever, but. That is some of the coolest artwork in the entire brewery back there where you can see it. See, um, Juan Kim from uh, Kinski, he actually hosted the, the brewery competition to set us down this path. He did some of these panels up here, as well as some of this around the, okay. around the door. Oh, this is a nice setup right here. Oh, wow. So this is uh, to all the graph heads out in Chicago and uh, all the graph heads will appreciate this. Wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. We thought we were doing one a favor. Like, oh, you get this big showcase piece and like, fuck that, man. All these crevices and cracks, and but he killed it. He's a, a talented dude, culinarily, artistically. And what's his name again? Juan Kim. Okay, a shout out to uh, Juan Kim. Revised. Okay, revised, a well-respected artist in Chicago, and he's been doing it for a long time, I'm sure. Yeah. So props to him. Yeah, it's just uh, getting the walls done was kind of this initial project to kill some time, and then all these panels were actually something we did, uh, a pop-up brew pub. And so, you know, you see beer dinners, yeah. pop-ups at bars or whatever all the time, but we wanted to fully immerse, so it wasn't just the, the tap takeover, but we got in and designed the menu and did a, you know, a full menu. We took over the audio visual. We got all these panels made that we could then go and hang on the walls and even like affect the aesthetic of the place. So it was kind of an immersive takeover. It's pretty fun. We, we don't have a physical space where we can sell. So having that customer facing out that even for one night was pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we gotta have a rec room. You know, oh, you got to, you got a to. A lot of downtime. You, people that, have a, a notion of you know, you spend all day drinking beer and this or that, and it's a boatload of hard work that goes into it, but you do have to whistle while you work, so to speak, and you know, so we're waiting for the spirit to transfer uh, a couple of games of pool to just keep your mind right. It's important. As you mentioned, it's not just glamour and glitz, uh, it's not just about tasting beers all day. These guys put in hard work, yeah. and they do. They genuinely do. Uh, so we have to appreciate that. I mean, yeah. Even so, we uh, have our canner. Oh, I saw that. That's uh, pretty cool. People envision something slightly more grand when they think of the canning line, but 
everything that we put out it goes down this small little conveyor belt. So and six heads, six cans at a time. We hand label everything on a benchtop labeler. So yeah, I mean, you, you're talking about logging hours to, to package and label a hundred cases of beer. You know, you're talking about an all-day operation. You know, it's you do it because you love it. You don't do it because you know, yeah, for this or that. Just for a title. It's because um, it's in your heart. Yeah, that's the bottom line. I mean, we even shy away from titles. So Jim, he's he's not our brewmaster. He's the one that you know, between him and Nate, they are very much the beer side, and I tend to do more of the, the customer facing, the, the selling, and the blog a ton of hours. I know how to brew all of our beers, but. You know, that's just not where my strength lies, but even they shy away from a title like Brewmaster. It's just, you know, we're, we're brewery owners, we're small business owners, we're contributing members of, of our communities. Like, those are the titles that are more important. Right, absolutely. And uh, so, uh, well, on behalf of uh, BBD and myself, we want to we wanna thank you for your time today. And um, the insight is phenomenal. And uh, I've been wanting to hit this place up for a while, Absolutely. I mean, so I'm glad I did. We generally keep an open door policy. Um, you know, if you send us a message on social media saying you're in the area, then we'll generally welcome you and show you around. Um, we don't sell anything here on site, so we just recommend that you get out and support if you're miscuous or the Fountainhead Market or uh, North Point Adela, Delhi. Um, yeah. Most Benny's. These are the types of businesses that we get through all this that are going to help us put things back together. So get out there and support them and stay distant, stay safe, but uh, keep going, buy and drink it here. Absolutely. This is, uh, so yeah, thanks for coming by. I uh, appreciate the, the Bruce Brothers hanging out. Uh, check them out on YouTube, on Facebook. You know, doing good works spread the word about small breweries like us so i uh, very much appreciate you guys being here all right sounds good so he is brad zeller i'm one of the owners of allen brewing and i am bbp and this is the bruce brothers